ok. So, if you remember I said uh, the amount of aerodynamic moment or hinge moment that you have to overcome you know, uh, will also decide the stick force that the pilot has to apply right and it will also depend upon the, the lever arm that he has but that cannot be too long or too short it has to be at a comfortable level so that every pilot can operate it uh, in a comfortable fashion okay. So and we said that uh, uh, <coughs> there is one situation where elevator is free to rotate right that means the stick force is not required to change the elevator deflection and uh, that free deflection of elevator can be found out by setting the hinge moment to 0 is not it. So we are talking about the hinge moment and that hinge is here is not it. So you have and this is your <coughs> elevator right. So we said that we are going to set the CH to 0 and CH0 is actually 0 for symmetric airfoil so for this tail, tail which is symmetric airfoil all the time but canard is not uh, a symmetric airfoil okay. There is the aft tail, aft tail is usually symmetric but canard uh, may not be symmetric. So there the CH0 CH uh, term may not be 0. Right. So when I set this hinge moment to 0 and assume that the aft tail is symmetric no, made of symmetric airfoil sections then this goes to 0 and we found uh, an expression for delta E free. So for every uh, angle of attack at the tail you can find a delta E free right and uh, if I want to now start using the elevator applying the stick force what it means is you are not applying any stick force here right elevator has automatically assumed that position is not it. So for alpha T which is positive this delta E free is negative which is upward right. Now starting from so this is where stick force is 0 right. Now if I want to deflect the elevator I will deflect the elevator only from this point right yeah I have to deflect the elevator negative or positive I have to overcome the aerodynamic moment starting from with this as the reference right. So where is this aerodynamic moment? coming from or the hinge moment is coming from the pressure distribution right. So if I call this you know, only on this part only on the elevator this as PU and this as PL right. So delta E okay from the neutral point neutral point will be decided by this neutral position of the elevator will be decided by this and beyond that if delta E is up 
negative right what is happening what is pl pl and pu which one will be larger P u will be larger, larger right because the camber is negative okay. So P u is larger in this case okay so you are getting a lift downward is not it. So if P u is greater than P l then which way the aerodynamic moment is acting on the hinge point positive you say it right okay so it's isn't it now so i have to uh, uh, overcome this moment So what uh, should be the stick force? I am deflecting the elevator up, right? So yesterday you saw that the mechanical arrangement was such that I have to pull FS or the stick towards myself, okay, to deflect the elevator up, and that is FS. And the convention is that this pull they uh, use as a negative stick force. Okay, I'm not sure if I uh, said something different yesterday. Okay, so let's uh, use this convention. So this HE the hinge moment is positive okay required to deflect the elevator down right all right okay but uh, if you remember we have been talking about the hinge moment considering this as the reference cord right this is where this whole action is taking place right pressure i can only talk about uh, the force distribution no, behind this hinge line is not it and that moment only I am using to define the hinge moment all right what happens to this part so let us draw a picture and a big picture here. Right. Let us say this is the tail on which I have to locate my elevator.
दस हजार हेंज लाइन ओके दिस पार्ट इज एलिवेटर what i have done here i have extended this portion right so that it joins nicely with this part isn't it why i have done that so look at uh, the aerodynamic moment that is being created is only because of the forces on this part okay no the part behind the hinge line what happens to this part now this is having a negative effect on the hinge moment okay so if you extend this part you now in front of this hinge line you know forward of the hinge line that part is going to give you a negative moment you know so when h is being created because of this part this other part of the flap or the elevator which is ahead of the hinge line is going to create a moment in the opposite direction so it's negating that effect right so this is very important when you are <coughs> sizing your elevator or designing your elevator this is very important the portion of yeah delta e free yes yeah. okay <coughs> so this uh, part which is forward of the hinge line is also going to play an important role right is going to have a contribution to the hinge moment is uh, actually this delta uh, uh, all i am talking about right now uh, you you can measure the delta e with respect to this zero line okay but uh, what we are talking about is the amount of uh, aerodynamic moment that you have to overcome by applying the stick force okay then then it has to be uh, with respect to this delta e free actually you can adjust that that adjustment is made by using the uh, setting the tail incidence angle so you can have uh, but that may not be changing at every alpha t right so this is only if uh, 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 can be used as a reference for calculating the aerodynamic moment and accordingly you have to find how much stick force you have to apply right portion of the elevator forward of the hinge line is having a negating effect okay so i have to actually uh, decide you no know, how much forward you no know, how much surface i want forward of the hinge line on the elevator because i want to reduce the hinge moment because that will reduce the work load on the pilot isn't it so this sizing is called
aerodynamic balancing okay you can read this so our effort is actually to reduce the uh, pilot workload usually in a uh, transport aircraft which is you know, designed for long flight there you do not want to uh, burden the pilot. So uh, there uh, what uh, they will use is uh, the surface for setting the trim that surface is called trim tab okay. So trim tab is a small surface located at the trailing edge of the elevator. So if you want to look at this section what you see is this. What do you do? What is our idea? We want to cancel the this hinge moment, isn't it? So now, if I want to include the trim tab to make this hinge moment zero, which is about this hinge line, okay, and it's free to rotate. So moment about this point is already 0 right look at what is happening it is not going to change the lift on the tail much with such a small surface right but the length arm length that it has is quite large is not it. So it is actually going to give a significant moment but the very small left negligible left. Now let us look at uh, this expression again for the hinge moment coefficient that is so I want to trim the aircraft at a particular elevator setting right and I want to find out the trim tab deflection free deflection so that the moment at the hinge is hinge point is 0 right. So what will the pilot do actually here now he only has to play with this tab and not with this whole elevator right. So once he uh, <coughs> sets you know, the trim tab he is actually setting the elevator angle you know, for any free trim tab deflection elevator angle will be automatically set right and you can achieve different elevator trim okay. So he has to only play with the small surface so he has to uh, probably not even actually have to apply any force he can do it through some gear arrangement okay right. So if the elevator is downward which way the trim tab should be upward right this is understood right. 
right okay why we are changing the elevator deflection because we want to change the trim speed we want to apply different speeds right so uh, actually uh, delta delta e over delta cl should also be somehow related to this uh, right this gradient isn't it because when you talk about a level flight condition when you are changing uh, let, let's say you want to uh, fly at different speed what you have to change you have to change this cl trim and cl trim you change by deflecting the elevator right an elevator is being controlled by the stick force isn't it and that is so so somehow these two must be related right and if you remember uh, uh, we said that this is related to the static margin or probably this is dcm over dcl right okay so this is related to the static margin right and static margin is giving you the stability isn't it so stability uh, uh, more stability we have the more control that we need to change the trim right this uh, we have discussed so what uh, it automatically means is that uh, this gradient gradient of the force with respect to the trim speed is also dependent upon the stability stability margin stability of the aircraft right is this clear so this quantity is actually depending upon the uh, stability of the aircraft so uh, where do you think that stability of the aircraft will change we have talked about uh, a free flying condition right we are flying uh, at some altitude isn't it let's say we are coming down and approaching the runway right? about this landing situation do you think this is going to change or any other flight also where you know you have this thing changing is automatically going to affect this elevator requirement and it's going to affect this right all of them are connected is this clear so let's uh, try to tell you where uh, uh, the workload on the pilot may increase even if it is not there in let's say cruising condition this minus uh, I think is there you can check back in your notes okay let us try to find out what this derivative is okay this is called control force gradient or stick force and it is related to aircraft speed stability.
So let us first try to find out an expression for this force in terms of the hinge moment. So F s is H e over L s, L s is the remember I Right, drew this picture. So F S is actually H E over L S. Right. Now again, uh, the expression that I gave you yesterday uh, was based on the work balance. Right. Here is the moment balance. Right. So let's look at this. C is this length into CH. So this CH is now sum of all the terms. Okay. There is an expression which has been worked out in the book that uh, just now I referred to. Okay, mechanics of flight by Phillips. And this expression for the stick force is this this includes the maneuver effect okay maneuvering. So uh, N is the load factor here L over W Actually, there is a nice derivation which gives you this. Okay, so this uh, expression has been derived. This is not an empirical relation. Okay. So, what we have to do? We have to find out what this derivative is. Okay. So, what we are trying to uh, uh, do is we are trying to uh, look at this force through which pilot is going to get a feel for the stability, right? Or or or, or this this call uh, this uh, 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 gradient, which uh, the aircraft should possess in some fashion. Okay? So to uh, to counter the effect of change in stability from the trim speed okay
for subsonic flights actually we can find uh, an expression for this control force gradient at uh, constant load factor and a trim speed which is If you want to find out uh, the longitudinal force per g, that is given by this Of course, you do not see any uh, anything defining the stability here, right. So, you would wonder why this would be related to stability, but I have not given you the expression for C1 so far, and this is. So clearly CM alpha is appearing here right, so this force gradient is depending upon the stability. The longitudinal force per G is also going to depend upon the stability right because C1 is a function of CM alpha and C2 is C2 is 2 into LT tail arm length CH alpha T over C bar mean aerodynamic cord, cord of the wing CL delta E CMQ minus CLQ CM delta E CH alpha tail into 1 minus epsilon, epsilon is the downwash minus CL alpha CMQ minus CLQ CM alpha CH delta E over CL alpha CM delta E minus CL delta E CM alpha okay there is a, a big expression okay but all uh, it's indicating is uh, longitudinal force per G which is this
is going to depend upon these factors right you would notice this q appearing here right q is the pitch rate okay when you are trying to do a pull up maneuver right there a rate is involved you want to pitch up the aircraft right when you want to <coughs> do a pull maneuver so that is where this uh, these derivatives are coming into picture okay let's try to quickly see what actually this means okay so i'm plotting here the stick force against speed and this curve is somewhat like this okay so let's try to find out the slope of this curve at fs which is zero okay does the trim speed <coughs> what should be this force for stability what should be the sign of this gradient when you change but right now this slope is what positive or negative it's negative right and this indicates speed your airplane should have this property if you want it to be stable with change in speed okay and let's see what's happening if you are changing this let's say there is some disturbance and the trim speed is changed it is reduced so what is the stick force stick force is should be positive right and for that the elevator deflection should be downward and downward elevator deflection means a downward pitching moment isn't it so this is also related to the pitch stability in some ways so if your aircraft is having this speed stability and you are uh, keeping uh, keeping your hand on the stick then you will automatically feel it okay so you are flying a trim speed and let's say uh, the speed changed in flight uh, disturbed change okay it's not a big change but a small change and immediately you will feel a force on the stick right so that is what it means right so uh, uh, now let's uh, try to so clearly uh, the flight in free air is going to be different from the flight very close to the ground right and uh, all those effects so all those parameters that you see there are going to be changed modified when you are close to the ground So one of the main effects, okay, is that uh, downwash angle you know, at the tail is going to change, and that is going to change which way? It's going to increase or it's going to decrease? It's going to decrease. Downwash effect is going to decrease okay, when you are close to ground.
so this is one of the major effect okay landing is a critical maneuver it's not a no many, many uh, uh, accidents will occur while landing so landing is actually a critical maneuver and you have to actually take into account of effects that are taking place close to ground right so you have to change those derivatives downwards is going to decrease right what did, what is it going to do if the downwards is going to decrease is going to change the trim and stability characteristics both right so pilot should know that when you are trying to uh, come down you are going to actually no from the screws condition you will initiate one no the approach maneuver there is approach and finally landing right at landing what do you expect i mean it should be landing uh, at what uh, cl cl max actually right uh, i think i'll continue from here in the next class any question <coughs>